What is the ideal standard or benchmark of fairness? Bargaining behind the veil of ignorance, a thought experiment. Imagine that the president has asked you to join a United Nations commission that is attempting to negotiate a new social order for the free world. You feel honored to have been asked to participate in such an important project and accept the job with a deep sense of patriotism. And you may well feel that your president has chosen well. You have some experience as a strategic negotiator, and you know how to drive a hard bargain. At the same time, you pride yourself on your fundamental sense of fairness and believe that you can help make life better for all concerned. When you arrive, the negotiation room has already been prepared. The room has an inner and an outer chamber. A guide informs you that it is customary to enter the inner chamber only after having passed through the ceremonial veil of justice, a symbol left over from a golden age when ambassadors negotiated while blindfolded. The guide wishes you well, and you pass through the veil. This is no ordinary veil. Once behind it, you remember nothing about yourself and your natural abilities, or your position in society. You forget your sex, race, nationality, religious creed, financial situation, mental and physical wellness, education, and social station. Suddenly, you find yourself blindfolded, in a sense, to your own identity and your own self-interest. As you begin negotiations, you are certain only of this. Wherever you find yourself once the veil is lifted, you will still have goals in life, and you will not want those ambitions to be blocked by a social arrangement which is prejudiced against you. When you return to the real world, you will want to know that the playing field is level, that the new rules you have created will provide you with a fair chance to achieve your ambitions. You will want to be rewarded on the basis of your talents and your diligence, regardless of your sex, color, political orientation, religious creed, nationality, health, education, and the like. Negotiating a new social order under this veil of ignorance, you are sure to come up with rules that would encourage equal opportunity for all. The Moral of the Story, Two Principles of Fairness What would constitute a perfectly fair bargaining agreement? Although we could never actually eliminate all of our personal prejudices and our advantages and disadvantages, what steps would we need to take to minimize them? What constitutes a level playing field or fair play or competition etiquette in business? Behind the veil of ignorance, the only safe principles to endorse would be fair principles, ones that would give you an equal chance in society, regardless of your life circumstances. Indeed, the safest thing to do would be to provide for the highest standards of fairness for everyone in your society. According to John Rawls, the author who developed this thought experiment, a reasonable person would choose to establish a society that followed two basic rules. The first rule he calls the liberty principle. Each person, Rawls says, must have an equal right to as much freedom as possible as long as that freedom does not interfere with the free choices of others. The liberty principle provides every member of a society with a basic level of dignity and respect. But, while all persons may be morally equal in this way, we also know that in the real world there will always be significant differences between individuals. These differences inevitably lead to social and economic inequalities. Faced with this problem, Rawls adds a second basic rule, which he calls the difference principle. We should allow inequalities, Rawls says, when we can prove that everyone benefits from them. Ideally, he says, the least advantaged in society would benefit most. If we can all agree that certain inequalities make life better for everyone, especially the most needy, then they are not only fair, but desirable. For Rawls, a society based on these two principles of justice, a basic liberty for all and the acceptance of inequalities that benefit everyone, would be perfectly fair. This would be the closest thing to a level playing field, which would allow us all an equal opportunity to pursue happiness.